Hello, my name is Dean Suzuki, and I'm a senior solution architect with AWS. Today, I want to talk about Amazon's fully managed native Windows File Server service called Amazon FSx for Windows File Server. Here's a quick agenda of what we'll be covering here in this session. First, I want to provide an overview of what Amazon FSx for Windows File Server is, then run through a couple of demos. The first one's how to set it up, and then how to map a file share to it, and then provide some additional resources. So what is Amazon FSx for Windows File Server? It's Amazon's fully managed native Windows File Server system service. And it's integrated with the rest of the AWS ecosystem. So what does fully managed mean to you? It means that you no longer need to manage the hardware or the software to provide Windows native Windows File Server services to your users. We take care of managing the hardware in terms of setting up the hardware and the servers and the volumes, and you no longer need to monitor and maintain them in terms of you know, hardware failures. We also manage the software in terms of setting up the Windows servers and also patching and maintaining the servers themselves and backing them up. So you don't have to worry about that as well. So with that, let's jump into a demo. So here I am in the AWS Management Console I've logged in. Now, to get to Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, all you have to type in is here's FSx in the Find Services area and click FSx when it comes up. Now, the first thing you want to do is create an Amazon FSx for Windows File System. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and click Create File System here. Now, you have two options. You can create an Amazon FSx for Windows File Server or an Amazon FSx for Luster. Amazon FSx for Luster is used for high performance computing. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on Amazon FSx for Windows File Server, so I'm gonna select that. Now, it provides some additional information here, and go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and click Next. Now, the first thing you need to do is give your file system a name. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this. And this designates what the name of the file system that you're creating. The next thing is, you have to indicate whether you want this to be in one AWS availability zone or single AZ, or if you want it to span a multiple availability zones. I'm gonna leave it at the default multi. Now you go ahead and select the storage capacity. The storage capacity can, can range from 32 gigabytes all the way up to 65,000 gigabytes or about 64 terabytes. I'm gonna go ahead and select 32 gigabytes. Now the next thing you wanna do is specify the throughput capacity that you want on that file system. So by default, based upon the size that you specified here, it's gonna recommend a throughput capacity. However, if you needed additional throughput capacity, you can go ahead and say specify, and you can go ahead and select the amount of throughput capacity that you need all the way up to two gigabytes per second. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at the default. So now it's gonna ask you to what VPC that you want to place a network adapter in to connect to the file system. I'm going to go ahead and select my VPC here, and it's going to ask uh, if you have an existing security group, or it's going to provide a default security group to secure that network adapter. And then also, what subnets do you want to put it into? So I'm going to go ahead and pick my two private subnets I have in my network. Now, FSx for Windows File Server provides Active Directory integration. You can decide to use an AWS Microsoft Managed Active Directory integration, or if you have your own Active Directory, either on-premises or running on EC2, you can sell, select Self-Managed AD. In my case, I'm running, I have a AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory already set up, so I'm gonna select that, and here it is. Now it's going to ask you what if you want to encrypt the file system. So you can specify an Amazon KMS key to encrypt the data at rest. So you can specify that here. The next selection here is to specify your maintenance preferences. The first set of options is when do you want your automatic backup window to occur? You can say no preference, or if you have a specific period of time when you want to initiate the automatic backup, you could specify that as well. This is a daily automatic backup. So now once the backup occurs, you can also specify a retention period for how long you want to keep the automatic backups. You can range from zero to 35 days. Now, if you needed to keep your backup for longer than 35 days, you can do a, what we call a user-initiated backup. 
and then user initiated backups are retained based upon your own retention. So you have to manually delete them when you're done. The next thing you want to specify here is the maintenance window. Now during the maintenance window, Amazon FSX for Windows File Server will perform patching. So you can say it specify no preference, or if you want to specify the window, maybe you want to specify maybe every Sunday at uh, maybe at, at 23 at 11 o'clock to have the maintenance window. And this during this period of time, we'll perform the patching and the other maintenance activities on the FSX file system. You can also specify some additional tags here to identify the usage of the file system. We highly recommend the use of tags to keep track of why uh, different AWS resources are used. I'm going to put usage video. Then we'll hit next. Now it provides a brief summary of the options that we selected in specifying the file system. And I'm going to, hit, I'm going to go ahead and create. So what's going to happen now is that Amazon FSX for Windows File Server is going to set the file system in multiple availability zones and configure that for me. So with that, I'm going to flip back to the slides. So now during the demo, we created an Amazon FSX file system. And what happens in the background when you're creating that is that it actually creates the server and the share and it loads Windows on it and it creates the file server file system for you. Then it presents a network adapter in your VPC so that your instances can now talk to that FSX file system. Now this diagram shows a single AZ setup. In the demo, we, we talked about the spec being able to specify the storage capacity ranging from 32 gigabytes up to all the way up to 64 terabytes. Now, if you needed additional space, you could actually combine multiple file systems together using DFS, Microsoft's distributed file system to combine and get higher capacities. So that's when we did the demo, each file system can be up to 64 terabytes, but you can actually get bigger than that by combining them together. Now, as you saw in the demo, we could also encrypt the data at rest, and also we can also encrypt it in transit using SMB. Within an availability zone, data is replicated automatically amongst multiple storage copies. And we monitor the hardware and software so that if there's any failure on the hardware system, we'll replace that for you. We also can perform data deduplication upon the storage such that you know if it detects multiple files of the same type, we can dedupe that for you in the background. During the demo, we also showed how you can actually specify the throughput ranging from you know eight megabytes per second all the way up to two gigabytes per second. There's also a caching layer in front of the FSX file system, which caches the requests, which can also add additional throughput uh, on the file system. Again, if you needed higher throughput, you could segment your data across multiple file systems to provide additional throughput capacity. This diagram shows what we actually did in the demo. We created a multi-availability zone AZ file system architecture, where we created an Amazon FSX for Windows file server file system that spans multiple availability zones. And this is what happens. We actually create file servers in two availability zones and have the data replicated across both such that your instances will point to the interface in the primary availability zone. However, if there's a failure, for example, with the server here, those connections will automatically reconnect with Windows to the alternate uh, Elastic Network Adapter in the second availability zone. And then it will, in the background, FSX will rebuild that file server. And once it's back online, those connections can be repointed back to the primary ENI our network adapter. Also, within each availability zone, we replicate the data so that if there's a failure on the storage, we'll replace the storage as well and then reestablish that high availability through replication between those file systems, between the disk in the availability zone and also across availability zones. The last thing I wanted to highlight on this slide is that if you have on-premises servers or systems or users and you have a connectivity between your on-premises environment and AWS, either via, for example, Direct Connect or VPN, those resources can access the FSX file system also across that connectivity. So Amazon FSX for Windows File Server can provide file server services not only to instances running in AWS, but also your, computes, uh, your users and computers on-premises as well. Now, in terms of Active Directory integration, we demonstrated that in the demo where 
Active Directory can be used for authentication, so you can still use your existing user credentials to authenticate into the file systems. And it can also be used for authorization using the same NTFS access control lists, ACLs, and share level controls that you have with an on-premises Windows file server. And we also showed in the demo that there's actually two integration options. You can use an AWS Managed Microsoft Active Directory option, which I used in the demo, or if you have your own existing Microsoft Active Directory, either on-premises or in the cloud, you can use the self-managed Microsoft AD integration option. In terms of backups, we demonstrated how we perform automatic backups. I'm gonna go ahead and build this out daily. And you can specify the automatic retention period from zero to 35 days, or you can do a user-initiated uh, backup. And then in the, with user-initiated backups, you manage the retention on your own. In addition to that, FSX supports Windows Shadow Copies, which allows the users to perform their own file level restores on, their, on the FSX file system. With that, let's jump into a demo now on how to use and map a share to the Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. So here, here we are back in the AWS Management Console. And if I look at the Dean Test file system we created earlier, it's now available. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. Now to use it and map a share to it, you'll need to know the DNS name specified here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this icon here to copy it to clipboard. Now I'm gonna go ahead to the Explorer and then paste that in here. I'm gonna put actually the backwards backward slash there. And I'm gonna go ahead and specify that. And by default, we'll create a share called share here. Now you can use this and just like any other Windows share now, I can map our network drive to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I can say it's reconnected sort of and connect. So now here I am map the share to that file system. Now within the share, now I can go ahead and create files and put files on it, just like any other Windows file server. Just go ahead and create a file here. This is a test. Now the next thing I want to do is maybe if I want to create my own share against that file system, I'm going to go ahead and use the file share snap-in tool that Windows provides. All you have to do is type in fsmgmt.msc, specified here, and enter. And that brings up the shared folders uh, MMC snap-in tool that Windows provides. Now what I'm gonna do here is not connect to the local server. I'm gonna go ahead and connect to another computer. And here, I'm gonna connect the other computer. I'm gonna paste in the DNS uh, file system, the DNS name for the file system we created. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in there. Hit OK. And now the shared folders tools map, we're looking actually at that file system. So if you click shares here, I can see, i make this a little bit bigger. This is the default share that was created. If I wanted to create another share off that file system, I can go ahead and right click and create new share. I can see what sessions are currently open against the file system. So I can see that here. And also I can see what files are open here as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the slides. So in recap, in this session, you learned what Amazon FSX for Windows File Server is. It's Amazon's fully managed native Windows File Server service. Also, you learned how to create an Amazon FSX for Windows File Server file system, and then how to map a drive to it. So here are some additional resources. The first is a guide on, on Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. And the second is a great FAQ that has a lot of frequently asked questions about Amazon FSX for Windows File Server. With that, I want to thank you for your time and have a great day. Bye.